Good evening all. Welcome to another episode of Saturday series. Today's topic is Internet of Things and Real-Time Application. We are having Dr. Binoy B. Nair, who currently serves as the Associate Professor in the Department of Electronic and Communication Engineering at Amada School of Engineering, Coimbatore. He has been with Amada from 2007. Before getting into the session, if you have any queries, you can just type it in our chat box. We will discuss it after this session. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Binoy sir to conduct today's session. Over to you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Um, we will be having a brief look at what is IoT and how the real-time applications of IoT help in our day-to-day -day lives. And then we will, if time permits, take some questions and your doubts, and I'll try to answer them uh, right now. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we are going to look at some of these following topics. First thing is obviously the question that most of you would be having is why should I learn IoT? Why is it of importance to me? That is the first question. Uh, once I give you an introduction to IoT and once I tell you what IoT is about, the next question that obviously arises is what exactly do we mean by it? After that, we would also like to have a look at how the IoT as a technology started and how did we reach the point right now where we have more IoT connected devices than human beings on this planet. We will see that and then uh, we will also see some of the use cases. Where do we use IoT, how we are using IoT right now and how is it transforming our daily lives. Then we get into a little more technical discussion, which is about the skills that are necessary for building IoT systems. Because of the popularity of IoT, you require a lot of people right now to work on these projects. Industry is looking for experts in IoT and they're willing to pay huge amounts of money to get experts in this domain. So we will try to see what kind of skills will help you crack the job market. We will also have a look next on what are the challenges and the opportunities that exist in this particular field. If you are interested in going into industry, what you should be looking at. If you are interested in looking at research, what are the possibilities there? We'll discuss that as well. And we will finish by having a small discussion on what Amrita has been doing in the field of IoT and also why you should choose Amrita as a source for all your uh, requirements on IoT. You, we will be discussing that at the last and then we will be taking your questions and answers. So let's get started. First question, why should I learn IoT? If you have seen any of these devices in your home or anywhere around you, you must be aware of the fact that all of these are IoT powered devices. IoT stands for Internet of Things and all of these things that you see on the screen right now are IoT enabled devices. Uh, the one that you see on the top left is Philips Hue, which is a smart lighting system. You may have seen this in the shops or in the e-commerce websites. What this helps you do is you can basically turn on and off the light from your mobile phone from your smartwatch, uh, you can control the brightness lights, you can do so many different things with your lighting system with the help of IoT. So these are IoT connected devices and these are an improvement over the existing traditional switches where you have to go and turn it on and off or you had very limited control over how the intensity of the light would vary, how the color would vary. Now all of that can be done with the help of a very simple app on your mobile phone or even on a smartwatch. You also see things like the smart plug, the one that you see on the bottom left, which is by Vipro. There are several such variants available by many, many different manufacturers. This allows you to connect typically dumb devices, like say your water kettle or maybe your toaster. You could connect any of those devices with the smart plug and you can have an app which controls this smart plug. The smart plug is an IoT enabled device 
which will be paired with an app on your phone and you can basically turn on or off your toaster which is connected to it as and when you like. You can connect it through the internet, I mean like through uh, the Wi-Fi network that you have to the internet and maybe you could be sitting in Europe and you could be turning on your toaster in New Delhi. Very possible. So that is the idea of Internet of Things. You are no longer limited by geographical boundaries. You also do not need to carry out all the physical labor that was earlier required to accomplish things. The most common IoT device that you may be having in your home will be the Amazon Echo or Google Home that you see in the center. So you can give commands just by talking to the Echo. Alexa will respond. It will carry out the tasks if you have a smart device connected to it or it will connect to the Internet and give you answers to your questions. So Amazon Echo is uh, Echo is basically a IoT connected device also. Uh, the ones that you see on the right hand side, fitness bands, fitness trackers, all those things that you have. Many of you may be having this by now. So these devices can help you not just identify how many steps you have taken, but also give you things like your heart rate and in more complicated on more costlier versions, you get things like your SpO2 levels, your oxygen content uh, in the body, the blood, and uh, you also will be able to do things like measurement of ECG, etc, etc, which are very close to what biomedical equipments are capable of doing. So just by tying this band, you will be able to communicate all your health data to maybe a doctor who's sitting remotely and monitoring your health. So if something goes wrong, the doctor will immediately let you know that there is something going wrong with your body. Please come to the hospital quickly. So this can save lives in a very big way. The last one that you see at the bottom right is a smart indoor air purifier. So in places which are very polluted, you have the uh, availability of such devices where you can remotely monitor the pollution levels inside your home. You can control the rate at which they are working. You will be able to know if it is safe to go inside the room or not. So this works in improving the quality of health and the quality of life inside your homes also. So these are just some of the use cases which tell you how and where IoT is currently being used. Many of us use these devices without knowing that these are IoT enabled. But now more and more devices are getting IoT enabled. You will see this space accelerating in the next few years also. And that is where the demand for engineers is like. The next few years are going to be very exciting for IoT engineers. If you are interested in working in IoT, this is the time for you to build your skills and get into a job market which is just about exploding in size. Uh, we will see the idea of IoT as per industry. You can see here that a large amount of money is now being pumped into IoT by the industry to build IoT applications to make their devices smart, build software on top of it, gives IoT related services, so on and so forth. So if you look at this, the most popular technologies in the industry right now are IoT, AI ML and edge computing. And now when we talk about IoT, IoT is a superset of all of this. You require AI and ML as a part of IoT data analytics. You require edge computing as a part of IoT. So IoT uses all the techniques or all the other domains that you are seeing here to build highly efficient systems. And that is why you see there is a lot of spending now happening in the IoT domain. AI and ML can be used for other applications also, but there is a lot of uh, interest in using IoT for in the, for using machine learning for IoT applications as well. So IoT makes use of almost all the other technologies that are existing around it to build efficient systems for our 
daily life and to improve the quality of life and quality of uh, industrial deployments as such. This is where we see the expected growth in spending for IoT applications. So this, if you look at this graph alone, this will give you an idea of how important industry thinks IoT is going to be in the near future. So we expect about $412 billion of investments by 2025 just on IoT, which basically means that you will be requiring that many number of engineers to work in this area. And the demand is going to only increase. The compounded annual growth rate that you are seeing here is 27%, which is a huge growth rate. So it does make sense for you to be interested in IoT and wanting to learn more about IoT and to specialize in it. Look at the next case where we are looking at the number of IoT devices that are going to be connected in the near future. You will see that 25 we expect about 27 billion IoT connected devices. We have already surpassed in terms of pure numbers. We have already surpassed the number of living human beings on this planet as far as IoT connected devices are concerned. But by 2025, we'll have 27.1 billion IoT connected devices. That is a very large number, which basically means that you need that many more people to build, deploy and troubleshoot those systems. So there is a huge amount of scope right there. We also see some of the communication technologies which are listed. You have things like 5G, which is rolling out right now. You have uh, LP WAN, you have 3G, 4G networks, etc. You have wireless networks such as the local area networks, uh, wireless personal area networks, etc., which are being widely used for deploying this IoT devices. So if you are going to work in an area of communication uh, or building electronic systems, there is a lot of scope for you to do research as well as be a specialist in the field of IoT. So once the economic aspect is taken care of or once we have fi finalized why you should be learning IoT and does it have any job aspects? Obviously, we have just seen that a compounded annual growth rate of 27% and roughly about 412 odd billion dollars investment in IoT by 2025 does make it uh, very clear that it is going to be a very hot area as far as job opportunities are concerned. But once that is taken care of, we will have a look at what actually is IoT. Typically, if you look at Wikipedia, IoT just IoT is described typically as a group of physical objects or a single physical object which is connected with the help of microprocessors or microcontrollers which run particular types of software and connect over internet or other local networks to do a function that you want it to do. Why I put this particular slide is mainly because in many cases people misunderstand Internet of Things as something which is essentially connected to Internet. But that may not be always required. Any device which is connected over a local network can also be called a connected device or an IoT connected device. So if you have a smart bulb which is coupled to your uh, phone over the local Wi-Fi network, but it is not connected to the internet, even then it is a IoT connected device. So any device which is connected over a network with other devices is a IoT device. And how did this name come about? The name came because of this man, Kevin Ashton. He was the person who in about 1999 coined this term Internet of Things. And he is the uh, co-founder of the Auto ID lab at uh, MIT. And once he gave this particular name, it kind of took off. And after that, we have been using this 
connected devices whole family of connected devices as the internet of things and if you talk about internet of things it's not just a single thing in itself a typical internet of things system is made up of multiple layers you will have sensors at some point you will have networks which will be either bluetooth or wi-fi whatever you may be interested in they will be the ones which will be connecting it to a processing unit which will most likely be sitting in a cloud and then there will be some kind of application which will give you the analytics related to the particular application that you are trying to control or use so we will come to this later on when we are looking more into the technical aspects of it but i put this slide here because i wanted to let you know that iot is not a stand alone device or a system a typical iot system has multiple layers of construction and each of these layers will require different levels of specialization and in different areas right so next thing that we need to know is how did this whole thing start how was the uh, internet of things revolution kind of when did it take off so we will start with the initial state of how the whole it revolution started so you can see here around 1830 1840 we start with wireless telegraph and then comes the mobile phone we move slowly and we reach the idea of mobile telephony in about 1973 right that is where the mobile phones start and then the next big invention was that of the personal computer which made computing accessible to everybody so mobile phones and personal computers were the starting points for all the internet revolution we see once this became popular we started miniaturizing things so about 1988 we begin to see the concept of ubiquitous computing taking off ubiquitous computing basically means you should be able to do computation wherever you want any time you want and this is the underlying philosophy of internet of things also now the things are able to compute earlier things were dumb now you have computational capability built into these things so the conceptually we started thinking about it in about 1988 by about 1990 mobile phones became more viable by 1991 we see the world wide web internet came in so this was the third component of iot you need to have wireless communication you need computing and you need connectivity so by 1991 the world wide web comes in and that is when people really start to think about connecting devices and by about 1999 the first term or the first mention of internet of things happens in kevin ash there are further improvements after this we start about 1999 we see the nokia 7710 which can actually browse the internet on the phone this is where we see integration of mobile computing and internet by about 2000 things have improved so far that lg has released its smart fridge so you are able to control the fridge to a reasonable extent using your mobile phone or using your separate device that you may be having in your hand a handheld device things keep on improving at a rapid pace by about 2003 we see blackberry phones which can handle email by about 2003 4 we ta start taking the term iot more seriously and by about 2005 or so we see things like microcontrollers becoming more mainstream arduino is a very common type of microcontroller which you will find being used extremely widely 
both in industry as well as for hobbyists. We also uh, have a few labs at Amrita which do development using Arduino, but you can also do it by yourself. The Arduino uh, ecosystem spans an entire range from pure industry focused devices to the ones which are targeted at uh, hobbyists who are just starting out with microcontroller or embedded systems development. So with the help of these microcontrollers, the embedded systems revolution is also taking off. So by about 2005, we are seeing more and more of these embedded system devices. By about 2006, we see that IoT, the term IoT, has been formally recognized by EU. And once the term has been recognized, you need to have a standardization of the communication protocols which are used to do initiate communication between these devices. So that is where the IPSO Alliance comes in and it forms a group in 2008 to push for the idea of internet protocol for smart objects. And then by about 2008, we see a situation where you have more connected things than there are people on this planet. So the Internet of Things has been exploding for a while now and by 2008 we have seen the number of connected devices exceeding the number of people on this planet. And by about 2010 and 2011 we are seeing more mainstreaming of IoT as a concept and Gartner adds IoT into their hype cycle of emerging technologies. So the idea of adding this to the hype cycle is to state that in near future this technology is going to be a game changer technology. So in 2011 people recognized the potential of IoT as a potential game changer. Something that could revolutionize our day to day existence. So we see that realization dawning by about 2011. By about 2012 or 2013, we see a lot of emphasis on IoT as a technology. And by 2014, IoT was being seriously considered to be used in industry, where you refer to it as the industrial Internet of Things. This was a key component of what is now being referred to as Industry 4.0 cyber physical systems, industrial Internet of Things and other such technologies, obviously AI and machine learning. So all those technologies are now the backbone of Industry 4.0. So by about 1914, industry also began to take notice of this. And by 2014, 2015, around that time, we see the connected vehicles coming in. We are seeing connected vehicles coming into Indian markets now. Uh, you can see a lot of the uh, cars you see now will have connectivity related apps. Uh, companies like MG and Tata and most of the high end vehicles already have apps which allow you to control a part of the vehicle's functionality from your mobile phone. That is an example of IoT. Then about 15 or 2016 we begin to see people with not very good intentions taking interest in iot so we are seeing cyber attacks on iot systems and a whole rethink of how cyber security should be reassessed in terms of connected devices so whatever antivirus programs and whatever cyber security tools we were using for traditional IT systems like your PC or your laptop were no longer sufficient to handle attacks on IoT connected devices. So a whole area of cyber security for Internet of Things and the Internet of Things networks has branched off. A lot of work is going on in that, that area. If you're interested in doing research in that, there's a lot of scope. Also, 
by about 2016-2017 or so, we see a lot of connected voice assistant devices like Google Home. Then you have the Amazon Echo, Echo Dot. So those kind of uh, devices have become more popular. And about 2018 or so, we began integrating more and more machine learning and AI into this so that a lot of the computation is now outsourced onto the devices itself rather than onto the cloud. And then we see things like blockchain and other technologies also coming into prominence to secure the devices and to help in streamlining the data transfer processes, etc. By 2018 or so, we see the initial launch of 5G networks. 5G is still kind of catching up as far as deployments are concerned, but 5G offers a lot more scope for connected devices than was possible earlier. You get a lot more data transfer rate. You are able to have device to device communication directly. So a lot of options are now available with 5G and it is believed that you will see a lot of acceleration of technologies like smart cities etc as 5G networks become more common. Okay. So that is how the evolution of Internet of Things has taken place from the beginning of the first radio transmission to the current state where you are seeing 5G networks being incorporated into IoT. This is what they meant by the Gartner hype cycle. It is released by Gartner every year and by 2011 you can see Internet of Things was added. This red or highlighted part indicates that IoT was added in about 2011. And then over the past decade, the IoT has gradually gone up and come down and now it has reached a state where you can think of the situation as if part of the IoT ecosystem has now reached a slope of enlightenment where we exactly know what IoT is capable of doing and we have started deploying IoT devices in large numbers. So we are very clear about what IoT can and cannot do and we are seeing a lot of deployments of IoT devices across the spectrum right now. So the technology as such has stabilized. If a technology is at the technology trigger level or at the peak of inflated expectations level, usually most of the work is still in the research stage. They will not be available for deployment or they will be mainly confined to R&D space. Because this was like 10 years ago, Currently, that technology has moved over from the research to the field deployments where we have crossed the trough of disillusionment and we are at the state where the slope of enlightenment has dawned and we are now in a position of position to understand better what IoT devices are capable of and now we are able to make the maximum use of IoT connected devices. Now the next question, where do we actually use IoT connected devices? Fair question. You use IoT almost everywhere. Many of us don't know it, but unknowingly we have interacted with IoT related systems a lot in the past few years especially. Let's have some use cases. First is to look at IOT as two distinct cases. You have IOT as its industrial version where it is referred to as the industrial Internet of Things and then you have the consumer version where we are talking about things which we interact as a consumer on a daily basis. So if you look at this IOT use cases, we find that it is being used everywhere from homes and buildings to IoT enabled mobile devices, shops to everything including supply chain management, travel industry and factories. We use them 
all over the place. One first example that you will see is that of IoT for smartphones. This is something which will be familiar to most of you. Now you have apps for controlling most of the devices. Your TV could be a smart TV which can be connected to your Wi-Fi network and you can control it using your mobile phone. If you have a thermostat in your home or maybe if you have an air conditioner in your home which is smart, you can connect that to your app and then you can control the temperature of the AC. You can turn on or turn off your AC just sitting in your sofa. No other remote is needed. Nothing else is needed. Everything is integrated together. You can also control the lighting. We saw in the beginning, the first slide itself, we saw that uh, companies like Philips and Wipro, etc. They have solutions which are referred to as smart lighting solutions which can be used for controlling the lighting within a home. You can control multiple lighting device. The color, all those things are possible with the single tap of your mobile phone. You can also have things like uh, automated control of the blinds. The curtains go up and down as and when you want. To press a button on your mobile phone, it goes up. Press another button, the curtains come down. All that is feasible. So IoT applications for smart homes is something which is taking off in a very, very big way. So in near future, you will be seeing a lot of devices that you usually use at home becoming mobile connected or internet connected or IoT enabled. So this is something which is very exciting. Uh, you will be able to visualize the impact of IoT in your day to day life just by observing things that are changing to IoT enabled devices right now. It's quite interesting to note that five years ago, which was thought of as impossible, is now very possible and you are able to see it in front of you. Second thing that we will look at is how IoT is being used in retail and warehousing. IoT is now being very widely used in all both of these areas. You can see cases where especially in Europe and US they are experimenting with making the stores completely uh, say humanless. You will not have any assistance. You will just go around and the devices themselves will begin to tell you how old they are. Say for example the vegetable itself will tell you how how long it has been sitting there. So you will know if it is a fresh vegetable or not. You will be able to automatically know with the help of an app on your phone where a particular product is placed. You will be able to check out automatically without having to even go to the cash counter. At the back end, based on how the customers are buying things and from where they are buying, you will be the, the people who are running the store will be able to optimize the layout of the store so that their business increases. They are able to make more money in the same given amount of time. So it makes a lot of sense to deploy IoT in retail and we are seeing it already. It may be happening in the back end, which may not be clearly visible to you, but it is happening and it is happening in a way that you as a shopper are not inconvenienced in the least. So in that way, there is a lot of advantage for that as well. Then we look at the warehouses. Warehousing operations are very, very complicated for large companies. Consider any shopping mall or maybe any e-commerce retailer like say Flipkart or Amazon. They have gigantic warehouses where a lot of products are coming in and leaving. So to manage the warehouse is an extremely challenging task. So what they have taken on as a way to improve the situation is to use IoT. So now the devices are tracked using, so the, the packets that you have are now tracked using IoT. Uh, you have IoT enabled machines which are working. You have IoT enabled lighting systems and the air conditioning systems which are ensuring that the products which are coming in are kept properly without spoiling and all the other aspects of transporting and storing goods in the warehouses is now being automated with the help of IoT. 
next use case is that of connected vehicles this we may have already seen if you have bought a new car in the recent past you will be knowing that a lot of these vehicles have the connected car tech which is available and uh, you will also be able to see that you are now able to use a little bit of functionality of the car through your app so you can turn off or on your lights using the app uh, you have companies like tesla which are also allowing you to use something like a summon function which means that you will have to be at a location and you just press one button on your app or on your smartwatch and the car will automatically self drive to the place where you are standing from the parking lot that is the summon feature that you have in tesla so we have reached a stage where iot can be used to control such complicated devices as cars and these are some of the companies where uh, which are kind of into uh, iot in a very big way and they have been using it for multiple applications so you can see they have been using it for infotainment uh, charging applications diagnostics analytics cyber security etc etc all uh, many companies are focusing on different different aspects of the iot uh, ecosystem and uh, you are going to see only an escalation in the number of deployments of uh, iot technologies for connected vehicle applications almost all the vehicle manufacturers are moving into the iot space and connected car tech is going to be very big in the near future so the next thing that we have to talk about is that of industry 4.0 uh, this slide is taken from siemens as you know siemens is one of the uh, biggest manufacturers of industrial equipment and they have taken into industrial internet of things in a very big way uh, the industrial iot is of great importance for companies mainly because it helps them improve the uh, quality of the products that they are making and it also helps them keep track of the equipment because any downtime because of damage to the equipment or breakdown of the equipment leads to substantial financial losses they would like their factories to be up and running all the time so that the production is done in a way that maximizes their profits so if that is not possible then they have to take some remedial action and if you deploy industrial iot to this you can have technologies like digital twins and things like predictive maintenance where you can continuously get data from the industrial equipment and predict long in advance when the equipment is going to fail in the future you may be able to tell this about two weeks in advance that this part of this equipment is about to fail and it is going to fail in two weeks time so that the advantage then you but you get is when that equipment is not being used you can immediately send one person to get it replaced so that the downtime is minimized so it adds a lot of value to the industry to use iot or specifically industrial iot for their applications the next area where a lot of iot is now being talked about is healthcare so healthcare related iot is something that is of great interest to not just medical device manufacturers but even for those who are looking at building lifestyle products you can take an example of the fitness band so samsung has got its own smart watch with a fitness tracker built into it apple has got an apple watch these are not traditional biomedical equipment manufacturers but now they have integrated sensors into their smart devices which can monitor so many health parameters that we are now in a position to get a holistic estimate of a person's health on a minute to minute basis there have been stories where a apple smartwatch has warned a person that he is going to have a heart attack very soon 
maybe in the next few minutes and that he should immediately go to the casualty of a hospital. So he agreed and he went to the casualty and they were able to diagnose him and find that yes, his heart was in a situation that if he had waited for a few more minutes, he would have got a heart attack. So it is actually saving lives right now. So IoT applied to healthcare is something which is of value for not just hospitals and for companies which are building healthcare related devices, but also for common people who may be having health issues or even for healthy people because it helps them monitor their own health. Smart farming is something which is taking off in a big way. Why? Because IoT enables smart farming to an extent where you can do most of the farming without actually being at the farm. The IoT along with robotics has eliminated the need for a lot of manual labor in smart farm. So you have things like aquaponics, etc., where you can do vertical stacking of of farms basically and in the same uh, footprint area you may be able to get about five times the yield or six times the yield which was earlier possible you could also do this on a, in a city where you may not even require soil to do this so you have situations which is typically referred to as uh, referred to as aquaponics uh, or hydroponics etc where you do not actually need soil to grow food and IoT has been a key enabling technology. This helps the farmer track the health of the plant, uh, track the growth of the plant, wh what is the humidity levels. They can track uh, the diseases that are coming to the plants. All those things can be remotely tracked and rectified at an instant so that the damage to the crops is minimum. You get good quality crops consistently. So smart farming is has benefited in a big way with IoT. Livestock management also has seen a lot of uh, benefit because of IoT. We will, uh, there are a few uh, companies in India even, which are kind of offering services on livestock management. So using an IoT enabled device, which is tagged with the cow, you will be able to know how the cow is feeling. Has it eaten? Has it been standing? Has it been moving around? Uh, is it giving milk? Is it feeling sick? All those parameters can be monitored. So, so imagine if you have a thousand cows or a two thousand cows. All you need to do is connect an IoT device to its ear or maybe to its neck. And this IoT device will feed all the data about that particular cow to the cloud. You will be doing analytics on that and you will be finding out which cow is not feeling well, which cow is having some problem. And then you can go and just take care of that cow alone. The, this saves a lot of money and a lot of expenses in treatment. Cows are very expensive. So uh, any treatment that you give to it, which can prevent it from falling ill or dying, adds a lot of value to your uh, business. So once we have looked at the use cases, we will quickly go to the skills that are needed to build IoT systems. And I have taken the use case of an intelligent transportation system as a use case. OK, so uh, we will see what are the skills required if you want to build an intelligent transportation system for a particular city. And if you remember in the initial uh, few minutes, I had said that an IoT system is made up of multiple layers. And each layer will require a different levels of specialization. By levels of specialization, I don't mean that one is necessarily inferior to the other, but they are just different specializations, which may be difficult for a single person to build over a reasonable amount of time. So if you are looking at an intelligent transportation system where the vehicles are talking to each other, vehicles are talking to the city where the uh, the traffic lights are automatically adaptively changing based on the traffic. You know automatically where the routes are more busy, less busy, uh, all those and you have automated warning of any accidents which are taking place. That is what we mean typically by an intelligent transportation system. 
so if you are building that at the perception layer itself you will need people who are experts in that particular domain like for example automotive engineers electrical and electronic engineers embedded systems engineers etc who will design the layer where the sensors are located which will uh, detect vehicles which will talk to the vehicles which will uh, pick the data from the road and uh, process that data at the local location maybe from the toll booths, etc, etc. So that is at the perception layer. So we will need engineers of this type. Once the data is picked up and transmitted, we will need at the transmission layer, people who are well versed with systems and IT, who can compress the data, who can secure the data, who can transfer the data reliably to the cloud or to the analytics center where the further processing of data is going to happen. So at this layer, you will need IT or communication or networking type engineers. You will also be needing people who are experts in cyber security. So once the data is transferred at the storage and processing layer, you will need people who are specialized in big data, information technology. So that level where the data storage and processing is happening will mostly be IT oriented. And then once the data is available, we have to make sense of the data that is being given to us. So making sense of the data is where your machine learning experts or artificial intelligence related people come in. So that is where a lot of AI and other related stuff will be happening. So you can see now that one single application of an intelligent transportation system requires specialization over multiple levels of multiple domains. So if you are going for IoT as your choice of industry, the course that you will be picking should have a component of IoT integrated into the entire field which you are going to study. If you are going to be an electrical engineer, you should have courses which are tailored towards electrical engineering as well as IoT enabled systems. So you should know IoT if you are an electrical engineer, you should know IoT if you are a mechanical engineer, you should know IoT if you are a communication engineer. So IoT needs to be integrated well into the curriculum. Only then you will be able to take that leap and directly join the IoT job market that is right now so hot. What are the major challenges and opportunities? These are some of the major challenges and opportunities that we can address if you are interested in working more towards your higher education or if you are trying to pick up some research projects as uh, your undergraduate uh, project or if you want to do this uh, with your uh, mentors during your undergraduate level. These are some things that you could be looking at. Security, networking and big data related challenges as well as interaction of IoT systems with humans and other systems. So these are some of the major challenges or major areas where you can do a lot of research and make a lot of impact, both as a UG student, as a professional or as a researcher. And if you are interested in going straight away into IoT, you could actually look at these products. You have NVIDIA's uh, Jetson Nano, you have Sony S presence, you have the Raspberry Pi. Um, if you are interested in building software related components, you have things like Amazon Web Services based. Uh, Free Aptos is available, Microsoft Azure is there. If you want to do deep learning or machine learning on the devices, these are called edge devices because they acquire the data from the camera and other things and do the first level of processing. You have things like TensorFlow Lite. Uh, if you are interested in building more complicated systems, including model based design, etc., you have MATLAB, Simulink, and ThingSpeak, which can be used to transfer data to the cloud. So, these are the things available, and we will wind up with some of the work that we have been doing at Amrita. So, this is something that we did as a part of our student project. This is a autonomous onion harvester which was completely IoT enabled and we could control it with the help of this app that is given on the right hand side. So this was capable of 
detecting human beings in the onion field it was able to see where to go the mark that you're seeing at the bottom is where it has marked where it has to go next it was able to find out where onion exists and where the onion does not exist and it was able to harvest onions uh, this project actually got selected into the world automotive congress 2018 and it was demonstrated in chennai uh, so this is something that we do as an undergraduate project but there are more impactful projects like the one that we have done for landslide detection uh, this is a very very huge project that amrita has done for the benefit of humanity as such so you can see we have been able to create successful early warning for landslides that have taken place in both western ghats as well as himalayas and this was recognized and uh, it was uh, kind of we were awarded the uh, center of excellence on landslide risk detection due to the work that has been going on in this area there has been also other work such as the wearable device for monitoring glucose bp etc etc so we are able to build a healthcare device which can measure almost a large number of physiological parameters to help a patient kind of take care of his health or to have a detailed information about his health sitting in the comfort of his home so these are some of the works that we have done and why should you choose amrita for doing or to learn iot you have already seen some of the use cases that we have listed out but if you are picking any institution to learn iot you should always be looking at if you have iot integrated into the engineering programs it should not be like a standalone course somewhere where you may or may not be interested in. all right so in amrita we have iot integrated into our engineering programs you get hands on experience working with iot systems and we have very good tie up with industry and academia where you will be given an opportunity to work on industrial projects as well as academic projects which are very close to the industry and obviously world class faculty is something that we uh, pride ourselves on and uh, you can refer to amrita.edu website to find more about the faculty members who are there we have specialists from all over the world who are now a part of the amrita family and i will stop with this quote from amma about the importance of education for human life not just for Thank you. Thank you, sir, for this wonderful, this wonderful session. Thank you all for joining us today. We'll see you on next Saturday at 6 p.m. Till then, it's me, Parvati, signing up. Thank you very much.